Hey, hi, my name is Rhonda Zalesny Green, and I'm a PhD student at Royal Holloway University of London. I'm in the final year of my PhD study, uh, which focused on the introduction of the World Reader app to a group of secondary students at a girls' school in Nairobi, Kenya. And Rhonda, what is the World Reader app? World Reader is an application uh, available on feature phones as well as Android-based phones that facilitates access to a library of more than 6,000 books. Uh, a number of these books are traditional favorites uh, from the West, but they also feature a lot of content from local authors from Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, and so on. And describe to me the girls' school and the, and the girls you were, students you were dealing with in your research. Uh, so the school that I worked with um, is based in Nairobi in the eastern part of the city um, and the, stu the student body is composed of a number of girls who come from very disadvantaged backgrounds. So we had a lot of single-headed households, we had orphans, we had girls who were responsible for taking care of their siblings and no other adults were around. Um, and so many of these students um, really struggled to attend school, uh, but did their best to attend every day. Um, and the school I worked with there, I've, I've had a relationship with them since 2011. Uh, so it feels nice to be at this point and kind of tying it all together and hopefully um, having had the opportunity to introduce something uh, to their lives that, that they will find useful even after my time working with them. And so what was the pattern of use of the World Reader app in the beginning and then as, as it developed over time? Sure. So like most mobile learning interventions, um, when something is new and exciting, at the beginning the girls were online what seems like 24 hours a day, um, reading books, um, messaging me, telling me about the books that they had read about, um, and just generally becoming very familiar with the app. And I would say uh, after about a month, uh, which also coincided with the start uh, of the second term of the school year, uh, the usage stabilized. And what we we tended to see is that girls uh, is that the girls use the mobile app um, usually about once a day on average, um, and generally for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, and that is what we have seen through the rest of um, the study, which covered the period of an entire school year in Kenya, which runs from January to November of each year. And what was the limitation on them using it? Was it their desire to use it, or was it other factors in their life? Well, just like you see in, in most uh, mobile for development stories, uh, this tool was something that was life enhancing. Uh, the girls had access to materials that uh, they never would have otherwise been able to, to, to reach. So for example, uh, one of the books that was the most popular and read by almost every single girl in full was a book about sexual health, male condom instruction. And so this is a subject that would be quite taboo, yet for them, they were able to read it in a, um, in a private manner and then also to discuss it with their friends. And, and so for me, Things like this enabled them not only to learn, but to learn something that they can apply in, in, in other areas of their life. And so I think um, for me, having that kind of a, a transformation uh, made the tool that was something that was valuable to them. Um, they wanted to use it, but of course, one of the difficulties became the time. So I think um, when you look at issues of time and, and socioeconomic development, very often the focus is on women and how difficult their lives are, but before they're women, they're girls. And I think for me, what was most interesting to see was uh, a disjointed discourse between saying, oh, we want girls' education, girls are important, we need to support them and lift them up. Yet on average, the girls in my study had an hour or less that they could use for studying or any kind of personal development. So for me, um, even though this tool was transformative, their ability to make use of it to its fullest extent and mm. the full potential was quite limited because of something like time. Mm. The, the time element was household pressures because it was actually the, the girls were doing the housework and, sure. and the boys were sitting watching. It, 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 was, it was household pressure. I mean, maybe it's best if I paint a, a picture yeah. of their day. So most of the girls were up by 4 a.m., um, out of the door by about 5 a.m., uh, walking to school or taking a matatu to school for, on average, about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, then once they were at the school grounds, they were responsible for cleaning up the school grounds. Uh, and then classes kind of began around 7 a.m. 
So then they were in school until about 3.30 p.m. Uh, they had extracurricular activities that on average ran until at least 6 p.m. Then they do that same journey home of about an hour, probably longer because of the, the traffic and uh, in Nairobi and how many people are on the, the, the streets. Um, and then once they're home, they are often tasked with getting food to, to cook for the evening, doing the cooking, serving the food, packing up the food, putting away everything, washing it. And by the time they get to that point, it's already 10 p.m. or later. And remember, I said they wake up at 4 a.m. So um, these girls are, are tasked with so, so much. Um, and, and for the girls who I did um, in-home visits with, you could see that there were plenty. There, were, there was no shortage of people who could have helped um, with all of these tasks, but there was no help. It was the responsibility of these girls. And so for me, um, watching that really built a picture of, of what it's like for um, a student from this background, um, even in the city, because I think a lot of these uh, things focus on rural settings and there's just as much work in an urban setting as, as well. And, and, and for me, it was quite powerful because you would assume that she would have as much time as she mm. needed for studying, but that's just not the case. And what, what, what do you think you've learned from looking at this use of World Reader in a, in a girls' school, that you would mm -hmm. go back to World Reader and say, you, what you really need is X. What, what, were, the, what were the things you learned from that? Um, I think what they would really need is content that's uh, localized for, for these various countries. So in this case, um, the Kenyan context has a lot of specific texts that the girls could use for revision materials, for um, exam preparation, um, and, and also just to follow along their curriculum. And, and that was the number one um, ask that I had from the girls in my study. And I think um, now that I reflect more on it, I think in part it was also because it would make it easier for them to justify to their parents or their guardians or whoever was in charge of them why they were using the phone so much because it was one thing to say, hey, I'm looking up this educational content, but the parents always want to see that connection back to school. And so while there was one girl who, who stated that she completely, you know, didn't use her paper-based textbooks any longer, she used her phone to do all of her reading, we didn't see that for everyone. Um, and while that wasn't the goal, um, I think it could have been possible had these materials been made available. So I think World Reader, which is definitely doing a fantastic job, they, I want them to do more and <laughs> to get more of these books on phones because I think they'll see um, an increase in, in, in usage of the application that way as well.